Hey, y'all. Did you want to know a little bit about me? Well, I think it's about time I introduce myself as well as give you just some inside information about who I am, um, things I go through, and just answer a busload of questions about my life. Um, if you don't know, my name is L.A. Bonds. I am the creator of Likewise Living. Likewise Living is a homemaker's haven where you can feel a part of a community of homemakers um, as well as it's a visual documentary, rather, of my life as a homemaker. And um, I even count it as like a memory book you know remember those memory books that we got in high school um i like to look back on my life and see different things i also hope that it is a file of some sort for my children and my grandchildren as they get older they can look back and say wow look at us when mom made this and look at us when we were smaller and things like that and um and i pray that they have very good memories from their childhood and everything that I hope to give them. All right, so for this, I didn't necessarily know where to start. And I am in my closet. If you haven't noticed, I am in my closet. This is my closet on this side. Well, this whole thing is the closet my husband and I share. This is my side. Um, this is also my side, but this is <laughs> like an office. Um, and also my podcast space when I um, am recording. Okay, so to get started, I actually was able to find um, on Wild and Free Homestead, she had a uh, homemaker's tag, which is like a Q&A type thing. And so I'm going to use the questions from there uh, because I think... They're very interesting, and some of them are actually questions I have answered throughout the years, and I felt like it will be appropriate to use for this video. So, let's get to it. I also have my computer sitting, like, right next to you. So, just in case you're wondering, like, what is she touching? What is she doing? That's what I'm doing. All right, number one. Have you ever had anyone say anything negative to you about staying at home or working from home? Okay. So to answer that question in a nutshell, yes. Um, because I have worked in corporate America as well as in the film and TV production industry, uh, when I tell people what I do and I say I'm a homemaker or I stay at home, they the negative responses that I have received were more like I'm wasting my experience or my knowledge um, on just being at home or like I'm at home doing nothing, you know, <laughs> or adding value. I'm not adding value to society when in all actuality I really am because I am cultivating a group of people and an environment that will actually function in the world. So yes, I have definitely had negative responses to me saying I stay at home and work from home. And 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 truthfully so too, I struggled with saying I stay at home. Um too. It's I I know for a fact I always struggle with saying I'm a stay at home mom because I know I won't always be a stay at home mom. And it never was something that resonated with me. Like I could not like mm, get up in there and say, oh yeah, I'm a stay at home mom because then when they move out, then what am I? And so, <laughs> like, you're a stay-at-home mom, mom to who, you know? And so, I I say homemaker because, one, um, it gives a better refined definition to all that I do. And it's more, it has more longevity to it. But also, it is something that I just take pride in. I take pride in saying. So, um yeah, I struggled with saying stay at home mom. I also struggled with saying um a working working from home because 
I don't have a stop. There's not a, you know, like when someone says they work from home, you really do think like they have a stop period. When I don't, I don't have a stop period. And I'm actually happy about that because I have more flexibility to do the things that I do um, when I want to do them. All right, number two. What are your favorite and least favorite parts of being a homemaker? Okay, so my favorite part is knowing that I'm doing God's will. My favorite part is knowing that I'm walking out um, Titus 2. Um, I'm walking out my spiritual gifts. Like hospitality is one of my top one. Administration is my actual top one. Administrative Administration is my absolute top gift. It has been, if you've never taken a spiritual gift test, let me say that for those who may not even know what I'm talking about. A spiritual gift test is pretty much um, like an Enneagram. You know how people do those personality tests. They answer a series of questions and it comes out telling you a little bit more in depth about who you are and some of the thoughts and things that you may have wondered about and kind of give a little bit more clarity. Same goes with a spiritual gift test. I always encourage people to give a spiritual test to take a spiritual gift test because it helps you understand a little bit more of who you're created to be, how God has shaped you. Um, it gives a way better clarity than a career-based, personality-based um, test, okay? So like I was saying, Titus 2 is something that I take dear to my heart because I've had it given to me through numerous women um and titus 2 says that women older women should actually teach younger women how to do this do this do this do this, all these different things and i want you to i'm not giving you the scripture because i feel like you you have the resources if you have a, a phone you have the resources to look up what titus 2 says in the holy bible um but walking that out also walking out my administrative and my hospitality gifts because it's one and two those are my top two um walking those things out i have always enjoyed creating a beautiful space i have always enjoyed um having some type of efficiency routine to make things go and you know in a smooth way uh, as well as administratively, I've always had a management type of mindset, management, ownership type of mindset, literally cultivated this as a child. My mom and dad cultivated that and really massaged that um, that gift that they saw in me and it has grown and I use it so much every single day. Um, and so I've been doing that forever. And so, yeah, I feel good about that, like, completely. All right, let's get to the next question. All right. Oh, it was saying your least favorite thing. I didn't answer that part. Um, my least favorite thing is how lonely I can be. Sometimes it is very lonely um, because um, I don't have that many women that can relate to the things that I experience. Um, and I'm saying like ma motherhood or home, you know, work, things like that. But as in sometimes I struggle with the socialization of it all because I know that my conviction to stay at home is not always the same conviction that someone else has had. Just like how I homeschool. Just because I homeschool, I don't encourage other people to homeschool. I always encourage people to do what's best for you, your kid, and your family. Like, do what's best for them. And so, a lot of time, there is a wall that is risen when I tell someone I'm a homemaker. And especially when I share that I enjoy homemaking and that I prefer to live a life that keeps me at home like I own businesses specifically businesses that allows me to still stay at home and so like when I share those types of things sometimes there's a wall that rises up in between myself and that other person um simply because they assume that I'm judgmental to their life so it can be very isolating like like I I have lived a large part of my life in a silo, like fully. All right. 
thankfully though i <laughs> can't really live in a silo because i have five kids a husband and i have like my close friends my close friends they're i'm not talking about them at all i'm talking about just other people all right what are your favorite and least favorite chores first and foremost dishes we're gonna hit that we're gonna hit that we're gonna hit the least favorite first dishes and that's because i cook not like my uncle says this and uh shouts out to my uncle maverick um uh, my uncle says this he says there are two types of people in this world those who cook and then those who prepare <laughs> and my husband always says you are a cook i am a preparer so i cook when I say I cook, there's bowls. There's many bowls. She's she's make, mixing. There's flour. <laughs> there's getting things together. There's there's a lot of the chopping of the vegetables. There's there's marinating. Uh, there's brining. You know, <laughs> like I'm cooking. Um, and so there's lots of things that are used. Like I'm I'm mincing the garlic. You get what I'm saying? And so. <laughs> I cannot stand dishes because I use so many of them sometimes. And I oh, I really do try to simplify the way I cook, like all the tools. I do some of those one skillet, one pan type of things. But the thing about, I guess, that I love, my favorite chore, which is cooking, uh... Well, I would say, you know what? I would not say cooking is my favorite. I would say creating. Any type of creating. Oh my gosh. Baby, I love, I love creating things. Like, I love that. So cooking falls in with that. So the least is doing the dishes, but creating amazing meals is like, oh creating that environment where the meals are, you know, enjoyed even better. Like, <laughs> oh gosh, I love that. It like, I can like tear up really about it. But, um, so I use a lot of things to create a lot of things in the kitchen. That's that answer. All right. Let me see. What's the next answer? What time do you wake up and what time do you go to bed? All right. <laughs> That's a loaded question because it really depends on what's going on. Um, Thursdays we go to BSF, which I will link in the um, description and I'll add a card here about what BSF is because baby, huh? Bible study on steroids. We go to BSF on Thursdays. And so on Thursdays, I wake up extremely early and go to bed extremely early that night. Um, as well as go to bed extremely early um, on Wednesday night. Um, but majority-wise, I go to bed when I go to sleep, like when I'm sleepy. And that's, that's something I really am trying to work on um, because I really want to wake up earlier every single day. Like, I would love to wake up and stay woke at my potty break. So my potty break, in, you know, while I'm sleeping, I have a potty break that my body just naturally wakes up to go to the potty, probably simply because I've been pregnant so many times. And so my body just remembers and, you know, I I feel like I have to go to the bathroom. So, and that's usually like around four o'clock. And then sometimes I'll just go back to bed. But I would love to be up after that. I would love to like have gotten six to seven hours of sleep. And I know that means I have to go to bed like, Mm, like right when the kids are going to bed um but yeah i i don't do it if even if i could do five five would be great five would actually be great um because i could because my little kids wake up at like six mm -hmm. my big kids wake up around eight 
but my little kids wake up around six and sometimes they wake up even earlier than that i don't do the nighttime shift my husband does the nighttime shift and i've heard all the stories and i don't i don't even i can't even hear that stuff but he does all right and so that's what time i go to bed i go to bed when i go to sleep when i'm sleepy and then the times that i wake up i usually wake up i have an alarm um that wakes me up every day at seven o'clock if i hadn't got up already before then all right do you put anything on in the background while you clean cook and etc listen i am a podcasting person like i love listening to podcasts and um like i would probably listen to two or three podcasts while i am cooking or cleaning but if i'm not listening to a podcast i will have on my like alexa or the television i have a television in my kitchen um i will have on there like um cafe music or like a really good um soundtrack like instrumental soundtrack jazz music um yeah i also listen to hymns a lot too so like the old-fashioned hymns but my boys they're pretty loud so a lot of times i actually put earbuds in my ear <laughs> like i have like one earbud air you know like you know what i'm talking about like the airpods i have my airpods i thought they were sitting up there are you sitting up they were sitting somewhere where are they oh they moved back they're back further okay you know like these this right here um i'll have one in it also helps when i need to be on the phone to not have both of them in too all right how often do oh okay wait a minute did i miss something okay that was do you have put on anything in the background okay do you get dressed most days or stay in your pjs i get dressed now i do have days when i stay in my pjs i love my pajama collection like what i spent time and energy on every single detail of every aspect of my wardrobe from my workout clothes there is a wardrobe for my workout for my everyday clothes which are my also going out beautiful looking clothes too which i'll do a video on my actual wardrobe because i feel like i feel like you will love that information but regarding my sleepwear i have an entire wardrobe for that um so i love putting on my pjs but i also love putting on my clothes like i love putting my dresses on um every single day like i love getting dressed so for the days i do wear for the days i do wear um pjs trust and believe baby i feel amazing in those days okay okay how often do you do your hair and makeup? Okay, so back when I turned 30, I am 37 right now. When I turned 30, um, I was going to, and I had been going to an esthetician for a good a good deal, like a good amount of years. My esthetician, her name is um, Arnite. And I'm going to give you guys information about her one day. Like, I'm going to do a whole video. But... I was going to her and I had a lot of pigmentation, hyperpigmentation. I had bumps. I also had eczema. I had a lot of stuff going on with my skin. And through the years and her education and correction and the routines that she gave me to implement into my skincare and into my health life, um, my goal from that point on was to get to a place in my life where I do not have to put on makeup every day. Keyword is have to. Because then I felt like I had to because I had like so many, like my face, like looking at it was okay. But then when you saw my face without makeup, it would be like, oh girl, you all right? And so, you know, where you had certain areas that were inflamed or super dry and all these different things, super oily in certain areas. I have combination skin. So, um, I'm at that place, you know, like <laughs> I am at the place where I do not 
have to put on makeup. Like I feel very confident in my um, complexion and like, you know, like it's clarity. Do I have days where, you know, I like see little things, different things going on? Yeah, like I still have even some hyperpigmentation. Uh, you can't really see it on camera. Oh, you can see it here. See, like there's a dark cast right there. Um, but yeah, yeah. And if you notice me doing this with my lips, I have I'm very juicy mouth, and also I recently had oral surgery, and so um I'm learning how to speak without a tooth. That's right there. I said tooth missing. You can't see it right off, but I'm learning how to speak. So I have more uncontrollable saliva. <laughs> like I'm like, where where did you go? All right, I'm trying to wrap this up because I want to keep this up under 30 minutes because I know some of y'all be like, attention span. Uh, okay. All right, so how often do I do my hair? My hair is always done. <laughs> it's always done because it's locked. Okay, commitment. There we go. All right, next question. <laughs> what is your trouble zone or area in your home that needs the most help? Baby, it's this closet and every single closet in this house. Every single one. Like, I have a goal, one, to always put my clothes away. Like, I've been trying to get that goal in because I am a person that, like, at the end of the day, wow, it made, me, it, made it look like I'm pregnant. I'm not. Um, <laughs> but I have been trying to get that goal in for years. So now I am intentionally practicing putting my clothes away folding them back up like laundry hanging my clothes up is much easier to do than like doing like oh let me fold and do mm -mm. hang them up that's done um but my trouble zone is closets because they're so tucked away they're so tucked away like even my pantry needs help my pantry is like overflowing okay like with disorder <laughs> all right well, how many questions are there all right how often do you find yourself getting distracted every day all the time next question number 10 do you enjoy staying home or do you miss going to a job every day there is nothing about me that wants to go and go somewhere and like clock in girl mm -mm. um and i do i do own companies so like <laughs> i'm a full-time entrepreneur also so there's no break like in financial security like i still make i have books that i have published i do like i, I still do work basically um, so no, I don't have to, but I love the fact that I don't have to go anywhere and like check in with someone and then they give me some parameters and tell me, you know, what to do. Okay. <laughs> so love that. I do not miss anything else. Oh, wait a minute. I lied. I do miss the film and TV industry, um, but I do not miss how committed and dedicated you have to be in those hours throughout the day like you can't have any small kids really your kids have to be like huge um and travel with you which is what i plan to do whenever i return back to that industry if i do which i do believe i will all right do you enjoy oh okay i already answered that question what is your never ending chore say it with us say it all together laundry it's laundry. There are five boys. Not ten. Five boys. Baby, it's laundry. It's a hundred. Let me tell you how many towels I have. A hundred and thirty-two towels. Hmm? Okay. It's laundry, baby. All right. What is your favorite way to relax or have me time? Oh. Okay, first of all, I love going to the gym. I love working out. 
I do not, I found out <laughs> this past summer, I do not enjoy working out at home. Nope, do not like that. I enjoy going to the gym. Um, but let's see, the, my favorite way of getting me time, it varies because one, I love gardening. Gardening has been one of my favorite things to do since I began. Um, I love hanging with my friends. Uh, like, yeah. I am an introvert, but I'm a sociable, like, I can be sociable, but I like hanging with my friends. My favorite way of me time, though, I'm trying to think, like, my favorite, my absolute favorite. Like, I do love hanging with my friends. Like, I enjoy that thoroughly. And I do love gardening. It will be spending time by myself, like, spending it in quiet. Like, even just sitting here in my closet, chilling. There's no noise. There's no interaction. There's no talking. I could probably read a book. Like, being by myself, yeah. That's it. That's it. How often do your husband... How often does your husband chip in? Uh, my husband, he's a full-time father and husband. So I don't know why that word is there, chips in, because we ha have this house together. Um, we have these children together. And so whatever I do, he does. Next. <laughs> like, I don't understand that. I don't even understand that mindset. Okay. If you have children, when do you find time to do chores? I do chores while they're around. I do chores in the house. And um, it's good for kids to see you work. It's also good for kids to work. Like So my oldest children, um, before they can even get on any technology, they have to complete their, their home stewardships which is, we don't use the word chores. We use the word stewardship because whatever God gives you, it is your responsibility to take care of. So um, he's provided a home for them. He's provided parents for them. Like he's provided a body for them. So they do all of their steward stewarding um, as well as they do their memory verse in order to even get technology time. Like you can't get it without those things. Um, and they do a doggone good job. They do, and they're very efficient. And I'm getting my six-year-old, he's starting to clean the bathroom. So like, I really think it's important to let your kids see you work, but also they work also. Like they live here. Like if my kids, if my oldest two were in here on this conversation, they would tell you like, what? Yeah, we we work. <laughs> like, yeah, we all work. This is a part of our life. All right. How do you balance being a homemaker and creating content? Mm, honey. So far, what I have discovered is I could just turn the camera on because um lots of people find that interesting. Not trying to create all the time like something curated, but just press record. Um, but in the past, I put too much mind thought into things and I compared myself. And I, I think I've shared that on my journey with lots of you through videos on my uh, Facebook, Instagram. I try TikTok. Baby. It's it's going to be there, but you're not going to see me on there. But um, the balance between those things, I was I struggled so deeply with comparison um, and making sure things look super perfect. Like, even old me would not even have did this in this closet. Like, like I would have tried to make some type of aesthetically whatever. But there's a craft that my son did. There's my me and my husband's goals. I got a calendar up. I got my podcasting. Like, I'm, it's, I live here. So, um, I'm learning how to not do those things um and i'm gonna do this last question because i want to wrap it up and maybe i'll do a part two if you want a part two let me know in the comments and i love the comment section too y'all i know some of you watch it but please comment 
it really, it, I like to engage with others. Like I said, and um, whatever question that was, it's isolating. Sometimes, you know, I like to talk to other people. All right. Last question. What is your favorite room in your home and why? I don't. In my house was my favorite room. Oh, my goodness. Ah. <sighs> I, I don't. Do I have one? No, I don't have just one. Like, I have three. Okay, I'm going to get three. It's my bedroom because of the chandelier and the walls and the height of the ceiling and the way the light comes in. It's my sitting room, which is like the the, the parlor. This is your formal room um, because it's quiet. It has four windows, the ceiling, the fireplace, the ooh, all of it. Um, and then my kitchen. My kitchen is a chef's kitchen. Oh, it's huge, big island, stove in the island, lots of storage space, lots of like humongous pantries, two ovens, baby sink looking straight out of a beautiful picturesque window, looking outside at a beautiful area. Like those are my three. I don't have just one. I don't have just one, but thank y'all. Thank y'all for hanging in here. It's 31 minutes. Well, going on 32 minutes, but I appreciated you for watching this video, especially if you watched it completely through. Um, if you would like to see more videos like this, or if you would like a video number two, like a part two of me answering questions on my life as a homemaker, please leave that in the comments. Do not forget to subscribe as well as hit that notification bell because I want you to know when I'm posting content. I want you to know when anything is happening with me. So um, until next time, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. 